Well, here we go. Let's start out with some coffee painting technique. And um, I'm going to show you some fun things that you can do, just a few techniques with it, um, where you can get some pictures kind of like what I've done. I've made an eye and a landscape. Um, and coffee is really kind of a fun thing to paint with. Now, the first thing that I should tell you is the paper I am using is this Arteza watercolor pad. Any watercolor paper you want to use will work just fine. Um, and to do these different pieces, uh, I guess what I ought to tell you is that uh, to get really dark darks in your coffee painting, you're probably going to have to let areas dry and then go back in after it's dried and continually paint layers on top of your painting. Uh, it's really the only way to get hard edges and dark areas both. So uh, that'll make more sense as we go through and, and play with some of these techniques. Okay, so I have taped down my piece of paper to the board. Um, this Arteza paper has two distinct sides. One side is more like a piece of um, canvas texture and the other side is smooth. Oh, I painted on both sides of this one, but the other side is a smooth piece of paper like what I've got right here. So I'm going with the smooth. It doesn't really matter which side do you want to use. Um, what you'll need is some instant coffee grains any kind um, I think will probably do. If you use um, some that's ground a little finer then uh, what you may do may be a little tiny bit different as far as the application goes but not by much. And a few different brushes and the brushes I use most often for this get this one wet so you can see it is a nice um, filbert and a and a small uh, smaller this one is probably about a four number four brush and this is just a mini painting if you're painting something larger naturally you're going to want bigger brushes probably but um, let's get started on this now have some warm water or hot water on hand the reason I say that is because these grains were designed to dissolve in warm water and they will dissolve faster for you in warm water and just put a little water into your tray Pick up some of your grains. You don't need very many to make a light wash, and that's what we're going to start out with. Uh, putting down a light wash, something like the sky in this mountain scene. Let me show you how to put something like that down. It's really so much like like watercolor in many ways. The difference is that this medium um, has some interesting application differences. It's a little bit stickier. Um, and if you just wash it across, you can put it on wet paper. You can wet your paper down first, that is. And just make a nice wash. And I'm just going to make some made up mountain textures in there. Okay. Now if you feel like yours is too light, you can go back in and add more coffee to my very loud tray. And you just want to dissolve it down. And I kind of feel like if it's not dissolved all the way down and there are some speckles, it's kind of the nature of this medium, so that's okay. The other thing you should know is that the more you agitate it, when you move your brush around like this, you get bubbles. I like those bubbles. I think that's also kind of the nature of this medium. You may not like them so much, so don't feel like you have to have bubbles, just use uh, a little more care when you're mixing. Mix slower and it won't mix as much air into your medium. Okay, just like so. Now, if I want to create some clouds in there, I could take a paper towel or a rag and just blot out some areas. I don't want my clouds to be too even, so I want to Bring them out like so. Now, true of watercolor is also true of painting with coffee. If I introduce water or more paint on top of something that's already wet, I'm liable to get water lines in here, water marks. Um, there's nothing really wrong about that. It's just something you should know. Those water marks can look something like this. 
you'll see these edges. They're really kind of pretty and they can be really useful in some things that you do. But um, you may not want them in your sky so much. So, okay, I've got a mountain, a sky in, and snow capped mountain for the background. Now, I'm not going to finish this entire piece necessarily for you. I just want to show you the different textures and ways to apply this so that you can go out and finish up a piece. Now, I want some mountains in front of the snow capped mountains that are a little bit darker than the snow capped mountains, or a little bit darker than the sky, that is. So, um, I want to make something that is darker than this. And I wouldn't normally mix my paint over the top of my painting, as I would probably be making droplets into my painting, but this is just for the sake of you being able to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to assume this is a darker color, and I may come in here then and put another mountain in front, and just like before, I'm just going to kind of wing it and make my own mountain shape. I'm not going to go all the way across because I want to show you another texture over here and I don't want it to be wet when I do that. And I don't want to use up our time while it's dry to have it dry so I can show you that other technique. But um, just come in here. Now I keep going over this and that is creating a lot of texture and um, unevenness in here. I like that for the mountain. I think that's a good thing. If you want yours to be smooth and just one time over, don't continue to to continually go back and, and keep moving it around like I just did. Um, but I like the fact that it does that because I like that kind of spottiness in there for a mountain. It's not a bad thing. I can go back and pick up some of the coffee that's up there and bring it down. If you saw I used water just down below to let it bleed in. A lot of the same techniques that are used in watercolor you can do here. Okay, now let's say I want to put a little um, line of trees in, I can simply go in with a smaller brush and you'll notice that I didn't make several different uh, values of coffee wash. You could do that. I found that when I've done that in the past that I just was wasting a lot of coffee. Um, if I just use one area and I continue to pick up what I need and change it or then I can bring some of it over here and start out to get a lighter wash if I need that again. Um, I'm using up less coffee and I'm just kind of using as I go, which to me makes a little more sense. Hopefully my water is still somewhat warm, because it certainly will. And I want this to be fairly dark, so I'm going to put a lot of coffee in here, if that can be considered a lot of coffee. <laughs> okay, and I'm mixing it around. Now I've got a smaller brush and I'm, I don't want it to be too terribly loaded because I want to make some points at the top of this mountain that look like trees. But it's definitely darker than what I already have on there. So if I come back in here, I can start to put in what might look like a tree line just by using the tip of my brush out there. See how lovely that is. And if this were more dry down in here, it wouldn't bleed out so much, and I could continue to do that. I can create some, some darker areas, definitely, even while it's wet. But if I let it dry a little bit more, I'll be able to put more texture in. It's really a matter. The more dark you want to go, it's really a matter of allowing it to dry in between and adding another layer. And I can come back in here if I want to and add more dark down in some areas, let it be more spotty, more tree line. Okay, this kind of gives you an idea. If I feel like I really want this to be dark up here, I can just drop in more coffee and it will darken automatically while it's wet. That gives you an idea of how to add trees. Now, let's talk about some of these really dark darks. Because right now I have a, a medium to light image and um, what's really going to add drama to the sepia picture is to have a lot of value contrast, I think. So uh, I want to go in and do some trees and I can add my copy directly to the page to get those wonderful trees 
in there. What I may do, there's a few ways you can go about this. If your piece is completely dry and you're ready to put in trees, you can take a spray bottle like this that puts out a fine mist and you can spray just where you want to put those trees and then you can apply your coffee in the same way that we're just about to do. Um, mine is still probably a little damp up in this area so I'm going to come back with my filbert and I'm going to assume that maybe uh, first let's say I want a tree here. Now normally my mountain would go all the way back here, right? I wouldn't just have a missing mountain here, but I'm doing this so that you can see on dry. I have three trees that are a little bit too close in variance of size, okay? And these are going to be pine trees. And that just gives me an idea to go by. So now I'm going to add water. And I'm going to add a good amount of water. And, you know, I don't need to use a lot of care in putting this in. I want to um, just give my coffee a chance to melt into what I'm adding on here. So if your paper is sucking up, if you're using a paper that sucks up the water pretty quickly. You may have to go back over it and add more water. Now what I'm going to do next is take my coffee and with fairly dry fingers I'm going to take it and I'm going to rub, just going to pinch it in here and rub it right on to my image without touching the page with my hand. I'm just going to put it in here and let it melt or dissolve, if you will, right on the piece in those wet areas. And I'm not afraid to put a lot in here because I've been doing this all afternoon. So if you are um, not quite at that point yet, that's okay. Put on what you're comfortable with. You can always add more. I'm going to clean my fingers real quickly here so that I don't have a lot of coffee going on. My, it smells heavenly in here. Now, of course, this is not archival, so you can't really turn around and sell this piece and expect it to last through the ages. Um, if people know what they're getting, I suppose it's not against the law to sell a piece of coffee art. Um, you could make prints from it or beautiful cards for friends um, who like coffee. And there are many benefits to working with something that is not toxic. Aside from the fact that it just smells lovely, it won't hurt you unless you are adverse to caffeine. You can go with decaf if that's the case. Um, if you kind of lose your head like I do every once in a while when I'm painting and reach for your dirty brush water thinking it's your coffee, um, this will save you from having a bad sip. I haven't actually done that yet, but wouldn't it be easy to do? And now you could have a nice warm, it wouldn't be hot, but a nice warm cup of coffee as you paint and you probably wouldn't be any the worse. So there, those are looking a lot like trees in there. Those are really pretty. And it, you can imagine if I had let this dry, if I'd done this all the way across and let that dry and then put these trees there, um, just makes a really beautiful piece in no time at all. Uh, so once I'm all done with this and I could untape it and then I just want to brush off some of these little bits that are still hanging on here because of course those are going to end up on my floor otherwise and you'll have a beautiful piece. You could fix it if you're worried that um, that it could smudge or get wet in any case. Um, but yeah, that's about all I want to show you today. Get out there and start creating some pieces with coffee. And if you enjoyed this demo, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have fun painting.